Not having an indigenous civilization, but rather a set of evolving cultures, has helped Southeast Asian nations be open and inclusive, and given them resilience, said President Thaman Shanmugaram at the Institute of Policy Studies IPS on December 5. Drawing on insights from a new book by eminent historian Wang Gangwu, Mr. Thaman noted that Southeast Asia has never comprised a civilization of its own. Instead, its local and national cultures were shaped by external influences. In particular the four ancient civilizations, Indic, Sinic, Islamic and European Christian. Countries in the region did not adopt any one of those civilizations holistically or singularly, but selected elements from these different civilizations and integrated them within their own evolving national cultures, he said. This enabled Southeast Asia to selectively modernize in order to preserve its own evolving set of cultures. I would add that this open and inclusive trait that runs through Southeast Asia's histories gives the region resilience in today's world and, I'm sure, equally significantly, the world of tomorrow. He was speaking at the launch of Living with Civilizations, Reflections on Southeast Asia's Local and National Cultures by Professor Wang, who is IPS 12 SR Nathan Fellow for the Study of Singapore. Mr. Taman said that the ability to selectively incorporate different civilizations from around the world enables the nations of the region to navigate, each in its own way, the tensions and tides of a changing world. It better enables them to avoid being pulled and tucked by those contemporary impulses. This was always significant for Singapore, which was continually exposed to those different civilizational influences. The British, who ruled Singapore, did not try to change this, he said. He added that Singapore's majority community, the Chinese, had a long history of being a minority community in Southeast Asia. That long experience of being a minority community in different parts of Southeast Asia does appear to have shaped a distinct ethos among the Chinese who settled in Singapore and that itself has helped us to become a multiracial society in a fuller sense after independence, he said. The openness and inclusiveness of cultures in Southeast Asia, and the fact that none of the individual nations or the region as a whole regards itself as a civilization in its own right, is an advantage in today's world, Mr. Thaman said. It gives us the humility that allows us to keep learning, and never to think that we are superior to the rest of the world. The region will go through periods where there will be a tendency for any one of these other national cultures, the homes of the major civilizations, to believe that they represent the best of human values or the best interests of humanity. Mr. Thaman highlighted two important lessons in the book. First, it is important for Singapore to stay united within ASEAN, as is its intention. Second, it is important for ASEAN to be united and to prevent its multi-civilizational cultures from ever descending into the warring nationalist cultures abroad that threaten the world today. He added, for each of the civilizations that have shaped us and continue to shape us, we should always distinguish between the enduring civilizational ideas and values and the contemporary national cultures, temperaments and impulses in the parts of the world that they came from. That, too, is how we retain our resilience. The 201-page book is a collection of the four IPS Nathan lectures that Professor Wang delivered from November 2022 to March 2023 and includes highlights of his dialogue with the audience. The 93-year-old has been a professor at the National University of Singapore NUS since 2007, an emeritus professor at the Australian National University since 1988. He was also director of NUS East Asian Institute from 1997 to 2007. In his address at the event, 
Professor Wang, said Southeast Asia consists of modernizing nations in search of a regional identity. Its numerous polities had over three millennia enriched their local cultures by selecting what they needed from the four ancient civilizations. After the 18th century, global imperial powers expanded to dominate the world with their modern civilization. Although our region came under their control, its local communities stayed in contact with the ancient civilizations. The region's leaders observed how the civilizations responded to modernization without adopting any single model, said Professor Wang. As in the past, Southeast Asian communities remain open and inclusive as they enabled their local cultures to evolve to become modern national cultures. Professor Wang added, Singapore as an independent republic has many unique features. But it has shared this experience of openness and inclusivity. It chose to be modern in its own way and joined the region in supporting the search for a peaceful way for all civilizations to live together. He said, I respect the integrity of national cultures everywhere, but believe that none today can claim that it stands for the universal values for all humankind. Calling Professor Wang the most significant scholar in the humanities living in Singapore today. IPS Director Junodas Devon said the book is a guide to understanding the forces that have shaped the region and challenges the readers to reflect on the past to better navigate the present and future.